uh, humanitarian side of the house. Um, so Hatter events, humanitarian assistance, disaster relief. Um, what are some of the ways that personnel recovery really fit into, I mean, to me, the kind of obvious, like, hey, it's a Hatter event. There's going to be yeah. personnel recovery, post-hurricane, tornado, earthquake, you know, tsunami, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But like, what are some of the, the things that a, we would do in terms of personnel recovery in a Hatter event? Well, this is really interesting, too, because it's specific only to us. Like, we're, we really are some of the only people that do this when we respond to a national event. So the easy ones are, you know, Hurricane Katrina. There were thousands of saves that the pararescue teams did down there. Um, you know, you look at the Haiti earthquake. So not only did we open the airfield in Haiti, but there were, a, you know, if you think about, um, I think it was like 1988. So remember when the earthquake hit during the World Series and all the bridges collapsed in California. It was during the Oakland A's. So the PJ team from Moffat were actually out there cutting through concrete and searching for people. When you look at these tornadoes that just ripped through um, Kentucky, the PJ team was there searching for people. And that was a, a, an extreme collapse structure event, right? The searching an area and finding people. And then if you look really look at the pandemic from 2020 all the way till now, I believe there are PJs working around the clock at step down units in New York. So while that's not like a true Hatter event, these are things that we can provide because of our skill set, right? We're able to work alone without a doctor constantly looking over our shoulder because that's what we do in combat. And when you start looking at a Hatter event, so hurricanes, earthquakes, uh, you know, even even with this pandemic that w- that we were working through and, and, and all these other things, we provide a very unique skill set and we are highly valuable because of the autonomy. You don't need to tell us what to do a whole lot. We can look and go, oh, all these people are sick and I need to find a way to organize all of these people. OK, I'm going to go do. Oh, there's a collapse structure and you have no idea how to get in here. Well, well, I have a bunch of tools and I have this specific training. I can access areas that you can't access. It makes us highly valuable in a hatter scenario. Um, you know, and, and that civilian mission. So the Garden Reserves always have a civilian mission. And we talked about it on one of the other ones, but we maintain an alert commitment. There's always a PJ team on there. You know, it's a joke inside of the PJ community is if you just stick your head out of the window and yell loud enough, there's a PJ team that will eventually come to you. Um, that's that's really I mean, it's funny, but it's it's actually true. You know, there's there's a team right now that's on worldwide alert. Every single team in every single state, whether it's ACC or ST or Guard or Reserve, there's a team of PJs right now that are ready to go do stuff at a moment's notice. You know, we are constantly ready for that call, which is really cool. Like that's, that's one of the really cool parts of our career field is that, you know, right now here in Albuquerque, my friend, uh, chief Rubio, if chief Rubio was like, dude, we have a rescue that we need to go on. I, I'm, I'm like, Hey man, I, I might need a little bit of gear, but I'm ready. Let's go. You know, that's, that's a cool thing. And Hatter kind of falls into that area and it's inherent only to us. So these other, you know, SAR rescue swimmers and, and maybe, um, you know, Navy rescue swimmers or, or you know, other other people that, that do kind of jobs that sort of look the same. They don't have that. Um, they don't have that posture and they don't have that response. Yeah. And, you know, we do a whole multitude of things during that. You know, you're talking about airdrops for resupplies, medical supplies, food, water, um, even even if like, hey, the, the jaws of life broke, which is very rare. But, um, you know, extra batteries for the reciprocating saws, that kind of stuff like we will do airdrops for that. We'll do evacuations. We'll, we'll bring in more people, you know, on an airfield or on a helicopter or something like that, get people out. So we've got the evacuation piece of it. Um, I already brought up supplies, you know, it's just getting people in and getting people out. And a lot of times, you know, with a, like a Haiti situation, you know, there's a lot of Americans that need to get out. Um, it's just reality. Yeah. It's just reality of it. It's not. It's not like, hey, that's your problem. We're we're not involved in it because we're we're there to help. Um, it's just you know when you start talking about Department of State type stuff like American citizens, um, they can have the option to stay, but oftentimes they they just got to get out of there and let the 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 local government handle their own business too. Right. And those are called non-combatant evacuation operations. And it's something that we train to, like we work with Department of State. Like, so for NEOs is typically what we call them. We had a joke in the 321st, as you're well aware, every spring, as soon as Africa started heating up, we were going to play to do a NEO. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's, a, we have that specific skill set and it's extremely, extremely complex. 
because there's people spread to the four winds. When I was in Africa, there, there are American citizens that lived all over Kenya. And there's essentially a big list that you get from the Department of State. And we're like, hey, if we need to flush everybody here for some reason, we have to get all these people together. Well, PJs are the people to do that. Like we do non-combatant evacuation operations. When you look at what happened in HKIA, who were the people on the ground that were making that happen in a real sense? The PJ team. You know what I mean? Like we have those things. Um, as part of our thing, we get hit all the time. You know, we we say that we're a jack of all trades. People forget uh, what that whole statement actually is. A jack of all trades um, is better than a master of one. Essentially, we love uh, the fact that we have all of these skill sets. So it's a funny thing in the soft community. Be like, oh, every PJ is a jump master. Every PJ does neo. Every PJ does this. Every PJ does that. Well, you guys aren't good at any one thing. Well, yeah, but we're great at a whole bunch of things because we need to be able to. Every single PJ, and like when you're a team leader, you need to be able to throw anything out of a plane on time, on target, safely to support operations on the ground, whether that be a non-combatant evacuation operation, whether it be a hurricane response, or whether it be true combat.